Maddie's like going psycho, growling at something, and I'm scared. Wait, is there something in the yard right there? I don't know. I don't want to open it because I'm scared that she. Ah! So it's 6 p.m. and I'm going to be attempting to survive the night camping. This is all my camping stuff. Gear. Okay, so here's the deal. I've been camping once, but I didn't have to do anything. It was a family camp out and it was the worst day of my entire life. Yes, I'm camping in my backyard because one, I'm too scared to go anywhere else. So it's six o'clock, the sun sets at eight o'clock and basically I've got to get a move on and set up a tent before it gets dark outside and I get stranded out here. So let's take a look at everything that I've brought for my little camping trip. I'm gonna crack open a beer now because I'm already getting aggravated. And I haven't even done anything yet. It's just the thought of it, you know? So this video is actually my mom's idea. I came up to her and I said, mom, I'm so bored because we were in quarantine, obviously. And she said, go camping. I'm so bored, go camping. Anyways, so then I said, you know what? If I make it a YouTube video, then I'll actually be down. Plus, it might be kind of fun for you guys to see me struggle since I have no idea what I'm doing. Anyways, let's go through my stuff and see what I got because I just want to sit down on something that's not the dirty ground. First, oh shit, it's floor. Okay. What the fuck? So I chose this spot because we have some very nice lights strung along right here, which I thought would set a nice little ambiance to bring some happiness into my current sad situation. There are so many wild animals around. I'm gonna get eaten alive tonight by a freaking... <gasps> How is this a chair? Uh, what? Okay, I'm assuming this is the bottom. Look, a freaking chair, guys. Y'all, I can do anything. Oh. Wait. <laughs> I put it on wrong. That's better, that's better. Okay, now I got a chair. Well, I guess if all else fails, I can sit on that chair and use that as a blanket to cover me. I have two more things. One of them has to be the tent. I'm gonna guess it's this one because it feels like there might be metal in it. Don't people like hang their stuff from a tree or something? <laughs> it's okay, there's no bears here. It's okay, just relax. I wish my chair had a cup holder. But you know, it's about living simple at the end of the day. God, this is a lot of work. I just wanna get everything ready before nightfall so I can cook because I'm starving. Bro, what the... I'm gonna... <laughs> I don't understand. This is a freaking parachute. Like, I don't know which way is even up or down. Okay, here's a zipper. That's gotta be some kind of clue. This must be the top. Do I need both pieces? Is this two tents? Like, what's going on? Is this even, is it a sleeping bag? Like, do you get inside of it? There's two of these, which makes me think that maybe this is two separate items and I only need one. It's getting cold. These are legit sticks. Okay, okay. I'm sensing that this means this is the roof. Oh, hold up. This one is big. Either way, you know what? It doesn't matter because I don't know which way's up or down with this thing. But what I do know is this is two separate tents and I only need one. 
so I'm gonna roll this one up for now for a minute. You know, it would be helpful if I'd actually pitched a tent with help in my life, or at least even watched. I just had a thought there might be a clue in here. <gasps> my beer! This is in case anyone comes up in here trying to cross me. I do believe that this is what you use to whack down the sticks somehow. There's instructions in the inside of the bag. Take out the tent and unfold it. Done. Attach the A and B alloy poles, then slide them into the pole sleeve. Pole sleeve. Pole sleeve. Pole sleeves. Pole sleeves. Maybe it's backwards. Pole sleeves. Pole sleeves? Pole sleeves? Pole sleeves. Hi. I can't figure this shit out, man. This? Is there? Spider! See, you gave me two tents. No, this is the fly. Well, there's it a spider on, on the fly. There was a spider. Who swallowed a fly? I don't know. Is it why. in here? Yes, those are it. Oh. I thought this was two separate tents. Wait, don't leave. <laughs> this end, put it in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then this end goes on this one. Okay, this is not gonna reach. Yeah, it will. Oh, shit! So now take these tabs here because it's gonna keep flipping over and go ahead and put it down in with the ground with your stake, yeah, like that. Like Do it stake? at an angle, because it can oh. slip up. Is that right? No. Why? That goes on the bottom. What? That strip across. What if that goes underneath? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Who would have thought? Not me. So this is what I'm working with. I'm pretty confused to say the least. I think I put stakes in some random places. Can never have too many stakes. Y'all, look at my fucking tent. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so I'm gonna give you a tent tour. Welcome to MTV Tents. This is the bedroom. As you can see, we've got a lot of extra foot room. Yo, the roof is dirty. We've got all these compartments to um, store snacks. Although you probably don't want to store snacks because bears, remember? So how's y'all's quarantine going? Oh no, I've lost my, oh, I have a chair. But there's a spider near it. I know there's a little green spider somewhere near this. Problem solved. <laughs> Man. <sighs> Nothing like sitting out in nature next to a tent that you built by yourself, sipping a brewski. You know, just really becoming one with nature. All right, second time I freaked out. That spider I was telling you about was on my leg. Fuck nature. <gasps> oh, that was scary as fuck. I told you there's deer everywhere. All right, and when you're done with it, tie it in a tree. <laughs> All right, so it's seven o'clock. It only took me an hour to get this shit done. So now we're gonna move on to the best part, which is gonna be dinner. I'm starving. We have about an hour to kill until the sun's gonna be down and then I can go to bed at eight o'clock because I don't know what else I'm gonna do out here with nothing to do. So let's take another crack at the handy dandy backpack and see what else we've got in here. Um, I'm just gonna go over a couple of camping essentials with you guys. First, a lighter. You never know when you're gonna need to light something. Second, hand sanitizer, a knife. 
you got to have protection when you're out here. You don't know what lives out here in these parts. I can list about 99 things that I'm afraid of in life and about 98 of them live in this woods. Spiders, snakes, coyotes, bears, no, not bears, but bugs. I got a, a little gas stove so that we can cook. I've got a trusty medical kit. Oh, we got a whistle with a compass on the back. It's broken. Some um, flushable wipes. You, when you gotta go, you gotta go, you know. And this is what I'm gonna be making. This is camping food. Oh, I also have this big thing of water so that I can cook with it. And my little utensils. Okay, so I feel like I can like get the general gist of this. You probably screw this on. This piece goes in this piece. See, look at that. <gasps> it's coming out. I can smell it. I can see it. It literally says protect from direct sunlight on this. This has to be the cook top. So this would go. My heart is pounding right now. I am not one to play with fire. Someone help me, I can't cook. And I can't whistle. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, that's hot. I don't know if I'm a, suddenly become a lightweight and I'm drunk off two beers or if that gas is going straight into my brain because I feel woozy. The water is starting to boil. It doesn't smell too bad. Look, I, did, I was not, <laughs> smell it. Who knew that it was this easy to live in the wild? While we're sitting here, we're cooking, we're having a great time together. I wanna tell you guys this really funny story of the first time and only time that I ever actually went camping. We went on a family camp out because my brothers are in Boy Scouts and my mom was a troop leader. So the whole family gets dragged out on a camp out. Me, my sister, my dad, we don't really do this kind of thing for fun. <laughs> Those three are having a great time. Us three are kind of miserable and we're like, why are we here? It was hot, hiking up and down like trails and rocks and mountains with all these Boy Scout kids that were annoying. Me and my sister kind of throw a teenage temper tantrum and we decide to venture off. So we leave the camp and we are walking around like a mountain and then all of a sudden we like look down over the mountain and we see another campsite that belongs to a different group of people and the best thing ever they have these like big nice chairs but they're like reclining chairs and they're all set up in like a semicircle with the back facing us so we point and we're like oh, down there let's go down there we'll sneak away from these losers and go relax so me and my sister climb down the mountain we're approaching the campsite of these people that we don't know. As we start getting closer, we realize that there's a man sitting in one of the chairs with his back towards us. And we're like, oh shoot, should we turn around and leave? It's my dad. <laughs> he had already like said F this camp. He like stole someone's campsite. Now we know where we get it from. Anyways, y'all, this pasta is looking phenomenal. It might be the beer talking, but I'm so proud of my a freaking tent, bro. A freaking pasta on a freaking gas. <laughs> what am I doing? Gourmet meal in the wild. Mosquito. Oh my god, what do I do? Oh, moth. There is some kind of weird animal that I have never seen before in my life sitting on that tree over there. What is that right there? 
It looks like a bear. I'm not even kidding. I'm scared it's like a raccoon and it's gonna bite. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? Excuse me? Animal? Oh, man. I should probably drink some water while I drank this beer. Ooh, it tastes like container. I would rather be dying of thirst. Hi. Oh. <laughs> I have graham crackers. But we only had mini marshmallows. And we only had like leftover mini Easter eggs. Trusty knife. What if I stab the tiny marshmallows and roast them over an open flame? Tiny marshmallow fire. So this is what I have going on. I don't think it's that stupid. What a beautiful evening. Take a look. Zoom it in. That is so good. <laughs> Yo, I just made s'mores. I want to be on the camp out. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> a mosquito. Killed it. How <laughs> did you catch it like that? <laughs> Not your middle finger. <laughs> Fuck you mosquito. <laughs> I see a freaking wild animal sitting in that tree. Could have been a bobcat. It's, it could have been a bobcat. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Since this is a camp out, Freak out your friends with these 13 campfire stories, except instead of friends, it's dog. The Wolf Girl of Devil's River. This Texas, this Texas based story. We are in Texas. They want me to tell a scary story about, te oh my God, I'm freaking out already. The Wolf Girl. <laughs> I hear stuff. In 1835, a group of American colonists led by Dr. Charles Beale were camped at Lake Espantosa. Half a mile away from the Beale group, John Dent and his pregnant wife, Molly, both from Georgia, had built a brush cabin. Dent had come to trap beaver in the Devil's River area north of the present-day Del Rio, but was also on the run from the law for the murder of a fellow trapper in Georgia. A band of Comanches raided the main Beale camp and massacred most of the inhabitants, afterwards throwing the bodies of the victims and their carts into the lake. As Molly was approaching the end of her pregnancy, the couple were reluctant to travel despite the danger of hostile Indians. One night, there was a severe thunderstorm and Molly went into labor. She appeared to be having problems with the birth, so Dent decided to ride westwards for help. He arrived at a Mexican goat ranch on the Pecos Canyon and told them desperately about his wife's condition, begging for someone to ride back with him. But as the Mexicans prepared their horses to leave, there was a furious crash of thunder and a bolt of lightning struck Dent from his horse, killing him instantly. After a considerable delay, the goat herders mounted up and followed Dent's directions. However, darkness fell before they had got over the divide to Devil's River, thus delaying the search. Finally, at sunrise the next morning, they located the Dent's isolated cabin. But what they found inside the cabin... <sighs> In an open brush arbor was Molly Dent lying dead alone. She had apparently died in childbirth, but there was no trace of the baby anywhere. The child was never found, but fang marks on the woman's body and numerous wolf tracks over the area made the goat herders naturally assume that the infant had either been devoured or carried off by lobo wolves. Ten years later, in 1845, a boy living at San Felipe Springs in Del Rio reportedly saw a creature with long hair covering its features that looked like a naked girl attacking a herd of goats in the company of a pack of wolves. And I'm crying right now and I'm scared. The story was ridiculed by many, but still managed to spread back among the settlements. Around a year after this incident, a Mexican woman claimed she had seen two large wolves and an unclothed young girl devouring a freshly killed goat. She approached... Oh. Ajax, why are you such a scary cat? You're supposed to be protecting me. I'm literally crying right now. He's sitting on my back because he's scared. And he's not even able to comprehend the story. 
The woman noticed that the girl ran initially on all fours, but then rose up and ran on two feet, keeping close to the wolves. The woman was in no doubt about what she had seen, and the scattering of people in the Devil's River County began to keep a sharp watch for the girl. There were similar reports by others in the region during the following year, and Apache stories told of a child's footprints, sometimes accompanied by handprints, having been found among wolf tracks in sandy places along the river. A hunt was organized to capture the Lobo girl of Devil's River, as she had now become known. I swear if someone's messing with me right now. It's okay. On the third day of the hunt, the naked girl was sighted near Espantosa Lake running with a pack of wolves. The cowboys managed to separate her from her wolf companions and cornered her in a canyon where she fought like a wild cat, clawing and biting frantically to keep her freedom. They finally managed to lasso her to keep her still, but while they were tying her up, she began to make frightening, unearthly sounds somewhere between the scream of a woman and the howl of a wolf. As she howled, the monster he wolf from whom she became separated appeared and rushed at her captors. Fortunately, one of the cowboys reacted quickly and shot it dead with a pistol, at which the wolf girl fell into a faint. The men were now able to examine her and notice, noted that despite a body covered in hair and her wild mannerisms, her appearance was human. She moved smoothly on all fours, but was rather awkward when made her to stand up straight. She was put on a horse and taken to the nearest ranch, put in one of the rooms, the cowboys offering her a covering for her body and food and water, but she refused, cowering in the darkest corner. They then left her alone for the night, locking the door and posting a guard outside. The only other opening in the room was a small boarded up window. But as night fell, the cowboys heard terror. What? 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 What are you growling at? Fuck. Oh my god. I'm so scared. As night fell, the cowboys heard terrifying howls coming from the wolf girl's room. Soon there were long, deep howls coming from all sides as the pack drew closer to the house, and occasionally strange howling screams from the girl answering them from inside her dark room. Suddenly, the large pack of wolves charged into the corrals, attacking the goats, cows, horses, and bringing the cowboys outside, shooting and yelling to drive them away. In all the confusion, the wolf girl managed to tear the planks from the window and escape into the night. The next day, not a trace of the girl could be found. In 1852, a surveying part of frontiersmen searching for a new route to El Paso were riding down to the Rio Grande at a bend far above the mouth of Devil's River. They were almost at the water's edge when they saw at close range sitting on a sandbar a young woman suckling two wolf cubs. Suddenly she saw them, grab the pups, and dash into the brakes at such a rate that it was impossible for the horsemen to follow. The girl would have been 17 years old that year after she disappeared into the wilderness forever in 1974. A hunter in this area claims to have seen her again in the form of a white apparition which vanished before his eyes. Back in the autumn of 1835, when John and Molly had newly arrived in Texas, Molly wrote her mother, mother an odd letter. It said merely, Dear Mother, the devil has a river in Texas that is all his own, and it is made only for those who are grown. Yours with love, Molly. <laughs> okay welcome to the tent maddie um i was not feeling too great with mr scary pants so i replaced him with the brave one lay down okay so we're gonna try our best to maybe try and go to sleep <laughs> Because Maddie's like freaking out right now and I'm scared. Is someone fucking with me right now? Please tell me someone's fucking with us right now. I think, I don't know, I'm scared. I don't want to turn the light because then I can't see outside and Maddie's like going psycho growling at something and I'm scared. No, I'm really serious. What is that? What is that light? Wait, is there something in the yard right there? I don't know, I don't want to open it because I'm scared that she's- ah! You motherfucker, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I fucking knew it. Who are you? <laughs> Jake? Maddie is smart. Dude! Oh, Maddie, go kill him. As soon as I hear something bad might go down, I flip the camera on. <laughs> Maddie was growling? She yeah. started growling and then barking and then i couldn't see anything and then like oh oh my god my heart are we gonna rattle it 
<laughs> or be like, whenever you say, Maddie, you're scaring me, I was about to be like, you should be scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm done here. Can I leave now? I think I've camped. Like, if it was Jax, I'd be like, Jax, shut up. But it was Maddie, and I was like, I know she can hear well. One second, sir. I was like, this is great. <laughs> well, she started jumping at the inside of the tent. Like, she was trying to get out and attack, and I was like, something is out here. Dude, I have a knife in here. <laughs> well, at first, what I if I had knifed you? I was so uh, scared uh, I called mom. I heard the urn, and I was like, she, she better not be calling the police at like next to the house. <laughs>